I shall want double honesty apostle GMS on the brothers will be pushing this truth in sincerity. It's gonna be a quick video uh, regarding uh, a few things to expect. Um a few trends to, to, to certainly watch out for within twenty seventeen. And um, you know, of course there's gonna be more than these, but this is just according to this uh, uh um this according to this article. So it says these five trends will shape the global economy in twenty seventeen. I'll touch on a few of them. Um, you can certainly read the article for yourself, but I touched on a few of them. Now, what I found interesting is um, is this is this uh, um, statement here. This um, this uh, uh, um, a picture here, which which says we want our country back, which is the same sentiment that you got out there, but in the United States, where if you got East or pretty much saying that they want their country back, and obviously they want it back apparently from the Mexicans and Hispanics and the Negroes. Uh, uh, Negroes that are out there, okay. Uh, so you got this uh, uh, void uh, or this um, this this pile of struggle that you got within both United States and Britain, and pretty much is going to be capitalized by you know allowing, allowing that to spread across the world. And notice how that's being coupled with the economy as well. So certainly when the economy uh, uh, um, um, fails, uh, uh, um, you know certainly when the economy fails, then you you know. You know that 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 uh, attention is going to be exploited upon by the global elites. They're going to exploit that as a means of pushing forward their chip. Okay. So it says every year brings its share of events that take us by surprise and shake up the global economy. So they go into the history and so on and so forth. So the first one they got is uh, is Europe unwinds. And it says if if surprising if the surprising uh, Brexit vote where Europe's uh, only problem the European policymakers and stakeholders in the continent. Uh, Continent's economy could rest. E uh, continent's economy could rest easy, but Britain's exit from the EU could be the least of his worries, according to Carl Weinberg, he says chief economist with uh, high frequency economics. Economics. He says he argues that a recent referendum in Italy uh, reaffirmed the appeal of the popu populism and anti-European sentiment, showing how uh, fragile the entire European project is. So. Uh, uh, um, inspired by Britain, okay. Uh, um, you had a few countries, not just Italy, uh, uh, um, that are very they, f they feel liberated and inspired by the Brexit, okay, and they want to follow in the same trends, which is going to destabilize. Well, you know, as the you know, because we're dealing with the economics here, that's going to destabilize the European uh, economic um, infrastructure, for lack of a, a, a better word, and. Um, like again with that, when that happens, people talking about they want their country back, but ultimately in leaving the EU is going to destabilize the whole European economy. So when 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 all you know all is said and done, they're going to be um they're going to be tensions, man. Okay, because you know people like this is going to feel like the reason why it's come to that point is because of the people that have have come from other countries to uh, uh, to work and so on and so forth are the cause of that, well, and they don't really. You know what's what's ironic about that is people like this they don't they don't really think about what the root of the problem is they just know that there's an economic problem and the solution that they have is have to have their country back or not to have their country back that's all they see when in actual fact uh, um, especially in the United States and, and, and places like Britain okay the predominant uh, factor when it comes to um uh, uh, um e e economic upheaval uh, um is the fact that all of these people. You know, uh, an individual like this has got themselves into a, a hell of a lot of debt over the years, and and the country as a whole is run as, on a debt system. But that debt system only is in existing if individuals like this that certainly want their country back because they feel like the people that have infiltrated their country and you know have have, have taken off, have taken away their financial uh, um, uh, uh, stability. When in actual fact, they're the problem <laughs> because the people that come in here, you know, they rent, they live humble lives, but it's your exorbitant lifestyle that's put you in the in the mess that you're in. You know, taking out loans that ultimately led, led to um, the 2008 crash, of which the result of the 2008 crash is not really have, hasn't really even been felt. Okay, you know, that was just a ripple. <laughs> okay, because you know you didn't need a new system uh, 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 um, in place. When that 2008 crash happened, you actually just used the old same, the same currencies, the same old system that you had before, with a few amendments to it. Why? Because, you know, 
you would you had something yet you know they at least needed something bigger than what you had in 2008 so uh, um they're gonna bring that that crash back again but this time you know the only result you're gonna you're gonna get out of that is that is the RFID chip spoken about within the book of revelations okay so uh, um you know that how I find these imagery this imagery you know entertaining in in, in some ways so uh, um that's what's happening out there in Europe okay so you got China growth continues continuing to slow down and that's that's an important one because that actually illustrates that all the global economies out there have got less disposable income now how can I come to that conclusion if you've got country A, B, and C, okay, and country A, B, and C are getting X amount of goods from China uh, every year, uh, um, and, if, and China's producing less, that means country A, B, and C are demanding less from China to produce that. Uh, and when you look at country A, B, and C and the people that are in there, if they're demanding less, that means the people are spending less, okay, within those different countries. They're buying less goods because they have less money, okay. So that's a big, big, big one here that people, you know, for the, for the, you know, people really uh, 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 um, underestimate. And certainly, um, um, if I've got that wrong, <laughs> feel free to um, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, um, inspire um, other ideas, you know, to come through, you know, whatever, whatever logic you, you're gonna put through. So, you know, this is an open forum. You can always um, uh, 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 um, leave your comments on the on the uh, comment board. Okay, so it says that uh, President Xi Jinping will begin the final year of his uh, first term in 2017, uh, 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 and the challenges he faces managing the world's second largest economy on a manifold. Uh, uh, China, China's government is aiming uh, for growth rates of six percent over the next five years, but recent experience has shown that reaching or even exceeding these goals with will not lead to a stable Chinese economy unless the, those targets are hit. In a sustainable manner. Uh, um, in other words, uh, um, you know, maybe 10 years, 20 years ago, they had projected growth to continue exponentially as it did. Okay, so certain debts were were uh, uh, were, were were taken. You know, money, money, money loans, etc., etc., in order to um to you know to fund projects and some uh, you know and things things of that nature. Okay, but as the whole global economy grinds to a halt and demand is less. We're getting less money back on those projects that you have uh, invested in, so it makes for a very unstable uh, 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 a Chinese economy. Okay, so that's going to be interesting because this is the second largest economy in uh, in the world, and you had the thing with what was it Black Friday, where the Chinese markets crashed or something like that, and everybody felt it. Well, don't be surprised. Either one of these economies, whether it be uh, uh, the United United States or your Europe. Uh, that being the EU or China could trigger off a, a chain reaction of um of of um you know economic uh, uh um unrest okay now there's some other things here but I'm not going to go into those I'm just going to mention this one here which is Trump's Trump's economy now and and that's the same thing as you got pretty much in the, it's the same flavor that you got as as with as with Britain you know Trump represents uh, 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 um you know uh, e Either my power, either my uh, uh, elite free power. Okay, so he's standing apparently for the common either my out there within the United States and uh, um, he's looking to get rid of the outsiders, you know, like the, the Mexicans and build a Mexican war and so on and so forth. Okay, and that's somehow supposed to liberate financially the United States and so on and so forth. But what you've seen was a lot of bankers, uh, um, international bankers and national international businessmen. Had left the uh, country upon his uh, election because you know they, they they withdrew their business upon his election because they, they feel like he's an unstable character. Okay, so that's going to be an interesting one to watch because, like I said, oh, any one of these three things there could really you know have a a, a ricochet uh, 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 um, chain reaction and you know laws will happen soon. Okay, uh, uh, um, they can have it to where the whole global global economy crashes, man. So pretty much with that, hopefully that was of uh, edification. I'm going to say double honesty, apostle GMS, ownership, obviously pushing the truth and sincerity. Shalom.